Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey here, once again with another video for you guys, and this is going to be another Q&A video. So, hopefully, from when this video goes up yesterday, I would have uploaded my setup video, so you get to check out everything that's behind my head, I guess, and some other stuff as well, because a lot of people did want to, uh, you know, see what I work with, as, uh, and also I promised it. <laughs> I've been promising it for like three weeks, so it should have finally been up yesterday. Hopefully, I've worked this out well. Uh, but yeah, so I will leave that link in the description below if you have not seen that yet. And of course, do be sure to leave any more questions for these Q and A's. I'm going to try to bring it. Uh, going to try and bring them out. You know, hopefully twice a week or every three or four days leading up to the seasons coming back. And also, when the seasons come back, I haven't actually announced this yet, but I'll hopefully do it once a fortnight um, on the weekend uh, when the shows are back. So. I'll probably uh, announce that and get into more detail about like the weekend Q&As every fortnight or something when the shows actually come back or the week before or something. But um, yeah, for now, I think I might do them then, but I'll let you know at a later date. So yeah, if I confused you there, just leave more questions in the comment section down below for these type of videos. But anyway, question one comes from Sturfeld. Is that, no, Sturfeld, I'm pretty sure I've written it uh, down correctly. And he asked, is there any way Malcolm could be alive? I loved his character and would be very sad if he's gone forever. Now, really the show's like Arrow season five, spoiler, I guess for the finale, but you shouldn't be watching these videos if you haven't uh, caught up on all the seasons, uh, at least Arrow and Flash mainly, because they're usually the ones we talk about. Obviously in the season five finale, Thea steps on a landmine that's obviously Leanne's covered in them and Malcolm sacrifices himself to save Thea. And also he blows a, uh, up, or blows up apparently, Captain Boomerang and some of uh, the, uh, what would you call them, Talia al Ghul's uh, soldiers, if you want to call them that. Now, the thing is, we're led to believe he died. We heard the explosion go off the last time we saw Malcolm, he was on top of that landmine, but we didn't see the explosion, we didn't see like evidence that Malcolm was dead. So until we see that, that's really when we can go, okay, Malcolm's dead for sure. John Barrowman, I think, is going to be in Legends of Tomorrow Season 3. I think they said that all the members of the Legion of Doom will be back at some point in that season. I don't know what's going on with Malcolm. It'll most likely be a past version of him. But I don't think you can 100% confirm that Malcolm's dead. There is that slight possibility that he is still alive. But the thing is that they've made us believe that he has died. So you just have to believe that he is dead. But there is that slight chance. I'd say maybe even like 20% chance that he's still alive just because we didn't see his dead body. Question two comes from Panos Vukias. Hopefully I pronounced that last name correctly. And he went, since Savitar failed, how do you think Barry, or future Barry's life is right now? And there's a pretty simple answer to that is that future Barry that we saw in 2024 doesn't exist anymore because Savitar never killed Iris. Barry never ended up that way. So that Barry doesn't exist anymore. In regards to what would 2024 Barry be like, well, you would hope you'd be happy now, happier than that future Barry was, because you're, you'd have to assume that Iris d isn't dead in 2024, or at least maybe she dies from uh, at least uh, a less violent death than being stabbed through the chest with a massive uh, spike, I guess. Maybe she died from natural causes or something, and it wouldn't be as bad for Barry. But you'd have to think, in 2024, Barry is probably married with kids. Probably, most likely still the Flash. Actually, he would definitely still be the Flash, but... He'd be much, much more happier than he was in that episode from season three. Question three comes from James Edwards and he goes, do you think that the Thanagarians will be the villains for the crossover? Now, this is actually an interesting question because ever since really Legends of Tomorrow season one, the introduction of Hawk Girl and Hawk Man and the Thanagarian prospect, um, it's been a thing that, okay, well, they could be the villains for one of the crossovers. There's a possibility, like, Mark Guggenheim did tweet out a picture of some... I might put it up on the screen now, like, some... It looks like shoulder armor. Because it almost looks like screws that are on there. Like, some people thought it was a little flash symbol. I think it's just, like, a, a screw. Um, so that could be for either some sort of machinery, like a robot, or it could be some, for some, like, Thanagarian armor, where maybe it's a nail instead of, like, a screw. I'm not too sure. The only thing that really goes against the Thanagarians possibly being in the crossover is because they're otherworldly... Um, obviously out of, out of this earth. Um, so I don't know, because just, just because they did the Dominator's last crossover, I think they might do something that's not, you know, extraterrestrial and like alien. So they might go for something else, but then next season's crossover, they definitely could go, to, go for the Thanagarians. 
a lot. Of, I remember in Legends of Tomorrow season one, the finale, and I was like, okay, I wonder who the villains could be. And everyone had a go at me saying, you idiot, it's the Thanagarians. They set it up. And I was like, they wouldn't do the Thanagarians for Legends of Tomorrow because it'd be way too overpowered. It'd be really unbelievable if the Legends defeated Thanagarians. And they didn't do it. But people were calling me an idiot because they didn't believe it would happen. So I don't know about that. But Thanagarians would be cool to see. The real, the real big thing that goes against it is because we had Dominators last season. I think they'll go for something else. Not alien this season, but next season it's definitely a possibility because I think it would be pretty damn cool to see them. Question four comes from Shifty Mex, and he goes, or they go, I can't remember if it was a dude or a girl. Can't remember. Anyway, do you think after this four show crossover that Barry and everyone else will start up the JLA or the Justice League of America? And it's definitely a possibility. At the end of, well, in the crossover last season, we saw the Hall of Justice. Like it was property of Star Labs, but it was the Hall of Justice. It looked exactly like the Hall of Justice. So it would be pretty cool to see, especially um, if, like, I don't know how to word this. If it's seen like, okay, we get together once a year or something, maybe we should become a team and we'll, you know, um, I know, I don't think they'd actually use like Justice League of America. I think the only thing they could really use is maybe like a modern day Justice Society of America. Uh, just because, obviously, Justice League, they're doing that stuff in the DCEU, so they might not use that in the TV shows. But, yeah, if they call themselves a name, I think it would have to be Justice Society. Um, but, yeah, we'd have to wait and see. It would be cool, though, if they, like, called themselves something rather than just, oh, it's the, the crossover team or something. You know, something cool like Justice League or Justice Society would be awesome to see. Question five comes from Tassos Film T, or is it Filmt? I don't know. Um, and they go, do you think Black Lightning and the, T and the Teen Titans show will be in the Arrowverse? Black Lightning, you would have to think so. I have a feeling it's... I have a feeling he's going to be set on Supergirl's Earth and they might do something hinting at that. I think in his season one, they won't really hint at it too much, but there might be like a little hint that he is in Supergirl's Earth. And then for season two of Black Lightning, hopefully he will run at the same time as the other shows, and he'll be part of the crossover for next season. Um, but yeah, I don't think he's on Earth 1. I think he will be on an Earth that we're familiar with, and that will be Supergirl's Earth. Um, but yeah, in regards to the Teen Titans show, I'd be very I'd be very surprised if it's in the Arrowverse, just because it's on that streaming service. I don't know how they're going to implement that, like how they're going to knock out the episodes, whether, whether it's going to be like Netflix style, like here's everything at once, or it's going to be similar to like Hulu and Amazon stuff where they release it like week by week and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. If something's like made for a streaming service, it doesn't mean it gets dropped all at once. Like Hulu had, actually I've got the show right here on my case. I'll get it now. Hulu had this show called 112263, which is about um, JFK. It's actually a really good show if you haven't watched it. It's got um, James Franco in it and um, James Franco. <laughs> And uh, that was released on Hulu, and that was released week by week. And Hulu was a streaming service. Like, this was a Hulu product. So, a lot of people get it confused. Like, oh, if it's not a streaming service, it gets released all at once. Not the case. It can re get released week by week. It's usually Netflix, which is just like, here, watch it all at once. We don't care. So, due to that, I just don't think it'll be in the Arrowverse. I think if they wanted it to be in the Arrowverse, it would be on the CW. I think it's going to be its own thing. The fact that they're, the Nightwing's in there, especially really means Bruce Wayne or Batman's going to have to be involved in some way in that show. And I just don't think the CW Arrowverse would need bringing him in and then they're being like all this fuss, like, oh, you had him on Teen Titans. Why can't we have Batman meeting Oliver Queen or vice versa? So Black Lightning, yes, in the Arrowverse eventually, maybe not in season one, but they might tease it towards the end of season one. And then season two is, yep. He's in the Arrowverse in, on some Earth, most likely Supergirls. But in regards to Teen Titans, I think it's going to be its own thing. They might actually build off from Teen Titans and create their own, like, Arrowverse in that world. I think they already have. I think they announced that Hawk and Dove are getting their own spin-off. I might be wrong. Let me know if I am. So I think that that's what they're doing. And then it lets them create um, content for their streaming service, as well as having the Arrowverse, which would go on that streaming service as well, I'm assuming. Question six comes from Adash Subramani. Hopefully I've pronounced that name right. And he goes, do you think bringing back Barry out of the Speed Force in the first episode is too soon or rushed? I feel they should have at least built it up for a few episodes. And Adash or Adash or how you pronounce it, I'm sorry. 
I think there's a lot of people in agreement with you. I'm in agreement with you. I'm in agreement with you as well. I'm not as angry about it as a lot of other people are. I've seen some people very angry and if not furious about it. I think it's just I don't think, I don't think the writers have confidence or even the showrunners have confidence that the show can run without Grant Gustin because he is easily the best actor on the show probably with Tom Cavanagh and I don't think Tom Cavanaugh's in the first two episodes either. So then I think they just sort of panicked and they had to have Barry come back. Like they had to have him come back by the end of the first episode, which we already know is going to happen, like going by the trailers and stuff. He's going to be back within the last five to 10 minutes of that episode. And I just think it, I just think it really shows that they don't have too much confidence with the rest of the cast. Um, but yeah, so I can understand why people are really angry about it. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I would like to see how the team worked without Barry for a while. And I think it would have been cool to actually see Barry in the first, say, if he was gone for three episodes out of our look, normal reality. But we actually saw him in the Speed Force for three episodes and what he was doing in there and what he's learning. And then when he actually comes out of the Speed Force, it makes sense why he's different and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I think it just... Yeah, as I said, I think it just shows that maybe the showrunners that don't have much confidence in the rest of the cast and they felt that they needed Barry or Grant to be on the show for the most part. Question seven and our second last question comes from Jack Neal and he asks, uh, what places in time do you hope to see the Legends of Tomorrow go to, I guess? Um, I think more in the future. We've been a lot to the past. I do like going to the past, like going to like the 50s to the 80s. I think I've said that in another Q&A. But I would like to see more future stuff and by future stuff, I mean going like maybe 10, 15 years in the future and seeing uh, like characters that we know and what they're like in that future setting. Like s s seeing the characters in a time period where we're not going to see them on their shows. Like we're not going to see Flash get to season 20 and see Barry in 2030 or Arrow and stuff like that in 2030. Like sh sure we saw 2046 Star City, but that was a, like a reality where Vandal Savage wasn't defeated and stuff like that. So that 2046 doesn't exist anymore. So I would like to see that. Um, but yeah, future stuff like that, like not too far in the future, like 10, 15, 20 years at the most. Um, and then even like just really, really far into the future. So like year 3000 stuff, which we did. We went to 3, 000, the year 3000 uh, in season two of Legends when they, um, like the Camelot episode. So they went that, that far in the future. It was very... CGI, whatever you want to call it, like green screen, but it was still cool to go there. And question eight, our last question, a very controversial one, but I had to answer it because it was there because I just need to. And it's from Spider Flash and he goes, Paigey, or it could be a girl, uh, Paigey, what do you think of West Allen? Now, this is a very, a lot of people think I hate West Allen. The, the thing with West Allen is in the comics, it works very well. Like it's why Iris West is such a beloved character because in the comics, it works so well. The issue is, on the TV show, like, Iris isn't a character. She's just that other half of West Allen. Like, Barry Allen is his own character. Like, okay, he lifts off all these things that Barry Allen has done on the show. Like, what makes him such a good character? With Iris West, you're like, she's Barry's other half. Okay, I can't think of anything else. It's very similar to Felicity on Arrow. And with Felicity on Arrow, they've actually sort of fixed her up in season five and actually given her a half-decent storyline. So Felicity actually had something going with her, on with her, might I say, in season five. But with Iris, she's got the journalism thing and they tease that they're going to do it every season and they never do it. Like, why? And now she's the leader of Team Flash. I'm like, why is she the leader of Team Flash? Like, why is she not doing the journalism stuff, which, you know, she should be doing? Like, why does she still have a job? We never see her at this journalism job. It's very annoying and it's just... The biggest issue with the Arrowverse as a whole, I think it's got really good writing in certain parts. The biggest issue that they have is writing female characters. Supergirl can be written really well sometimes and it can be written very terribly for their female characters and it's a female driven show. Um, and then you have like the supporting characters on the other shows like Arrow and Flash where the female characters are like, like what's going on here? Like, like what's Thea done? Like Thea's such a promising character in season one and two and arguably even three and season four and five it's like, like what the hell happened there? Felicity, we all know the problems there. Iris, I've just listed them there. They don't know what they're doing with the character. Arguably, Sarah Lance is probably the best written character in the Arrowverse in regards to a female. And that's even not like white hot, like it's just decent. So, West Allen has potential to be good 
but it's just not re written very well. And I always get attacked on Twitter that I hate West Allen and I'm, and I'm attacking it. I'm not. I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to point out the issues with it, similar to what, with Olicity. And I think in season five, they even tried to fix that. Like if Olicity still happens on Arrow, if they take it slow, I'm going to be like, okay, whatever. I can't be bothered dealing with it anymore in regards to arguing with it. Because it can still be written well. It's just that it's been written terribly when it, they've tried to do it. So they've got to do the same with West Allen. Try and write it well. Make Iris an actual character, not the other half of West Allen. And then it actually could work. But at the moment, it's not. And going into season four, it doesn't look like they're doing anything different with the Iris character. So I have really no hope for it going into season four. But thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. As I said, uh, hopefully I've uploaded the setup video. I will leave a link in the description below. But if you did enjoy the video, it'd be awesome if you could leave a like on it just to show your support for the video and the channel as a whole. As I said, leave more questions in the comment section down below for the rest of these Q and A's. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later guys and goodbye.